If you watch a few of my videos, you'll know that I'm really interested in lost histories, lost cultures, and disappeared or vanished expeditions. And this story has a little bit of all three. Basically, the story goes that in 1609, the French founded Quebec City up in Canada, and they used this to create a sort of fur trading empire, but the fur trade would not last forever. It really dwindled in the early 1850s. But with their fur trade empire, they tried moving around a little bit. But the British got to be a little bit too rowdy over on the East Coast, and the French realized that if we go south enough, we'll find some Spanish people, we'll find the Spanish Empire. So why don't we send our explorers down from the north, and the Spanish can send their explorers up from the south, and we'll bottle up the English along the eastern coast. So in 1690 they started this, and in 1720 the Spanish launched the Via Sur expedition, which was partly to find lost cities of gold, they loved doing that, but also partly just to reach the French up along the river. And they were totally defeated, wiped out by the Pawnee in what is now Nebraska, just destroyed. And nobody knew what happened to them until years later. And the French decided in 1730, years later, uh, to launch their own expedition to find the mythical river of the West. And this was basically serving the same interest. They wanted to reach the Spanish to establish a European settlement out West, but they also figured that this would help them find easy passage to the Pacific Ocean. They knew the Pacific was there, but they didn't know any easy route to it. And if you consider their logic that the Nile runs all the way through Egypt and into the vast and mysterious desert, or that the Amazon runs up all the way from Brazil all the way across the continent to the mountains of Peru, they were figuring that from the Rocky Mountains, which they had heard plenty of reports of, but I don't believe they'd seen, you could find a river that went all the way to the Pacific. And around 1730, 1738, uh, the Varendry family left to go find this river. They called it the um, River Buenaventura, the river from the Rocky Mountain to the ocean. And they figured, because they'd heard a lot of reports, that it had a lot of mysterious things going on there. At least some of the Native Americans told them, hey, there's people who look awfully French there. They've got beards, they've got long hair, they've got armor, they ride horses. If you go far enough west, you'll find it. And to find it, you have to talk to the horse people, which is the way that they referred to one of the local tribes. So in the 1738, around there, they went down to a fort on the Great Lakes where they sort of rendezvoused. And from this fort, they set out on their journey as far west as anybody had made it at that time. Now I've heard that Coulter was the first white man to set foot in Wyoming, and that's not true. Coulter was here in the early 1800s. These guys were here in the early 1740s. So earliest, earliest expedition, and yet even then they found plenty of people who spoke Spanish, which indicates something about the movement of the nomadic peoples along the Great Basin and the Great Plains at the time. This part of the story is shrouded in mystery because the Varendry family didn't really keep good notes. We don't know where they were, where they went, who they were with, but sometime around 1738 at Fort Laurene in the Great Lakes, they were told that if you follow a river and go basically all summer, just head west, you'll find this river, and if you follow it for the rest of the season, you will get to this settlement of people who look like you. They're in suits of armor, they ride horses, they speak French or Spanish or some Romance language. They said, if you follow it, you'll get there. And then the description that they gave was that these people worshipped the great deity, that they read from corn husks, which were books, that they lived in stone houses. So the Varendry said, this is perfect. It's probably a lost Spanish colony because the Spanish were there since the 1500s. They probably set up a couple expeditions and it was conceivable to think that one of them just got stuck there and founded a settlement and was forgotten by the Spanish Empire. So they set out and they didn't really record what they found. They probably followed this river all summer, but finding nothing, they came back. And in 18 or 17, 42, they were told by the Native Americans that two horse people guides are coming. All you have to do is find these horse people and they will take you to the headwaters of the river and they'll guide you. Well, by April, this hadn't panned out. It was April 1742 and they said, we're going to find two Mandan guides 
and they're going to take us as far west as they can. And these Mandan guides took them 20 days to the west before apparently there's no real record of what happened to the Mandan guides because this was April. Well, by August, the Mandan guides were gone and they had different guides, but they didn't mention who these guides were. And at this point in time, it was three Varendry brothers and two guides and two random French people. We don't know who they were, but there were French people in this area living basically a Spartan wild man, mountain man lifestyle. Nobody really knew them or why they were out here. So they continued until August. This is months without seeing anybody or only seeing one or two people at a time. And for weeks, they saw nobody. They reach the mountain of the horse people. And by all accounts, they cross the Great Plains and they see a mountain range. And there's a larger mountain that belongs to the horse people where their guides who might have been Mandan or Arikara, they refuse to take them any further. So they light signal fires and they signal the mountains. Well, it took until September that they were signaled back and invited over to the horse people's village. And it wasn't the horse people. When they got there, it was the handsome people that lived at the foot of the mountain of the horse people. And they stayed there for another month or so, about 20 days to a month, before they decided to try to make contact with the horse people because as the Native Americans told them, the horse people were their gateway to the river of the west, to River Buenaventura, and they needed desperately to make contact with these horse people. So they waited there for a while and got a couple guides and tried to go find the horse people. And uh, eventually they did. And so throughout October, the Varendry expedition continues westwards and cold is setting in, they're freezing when they finally, on the 19th, contact the horse people's tribe. But when they get there, they find that there is a brutal tribal war with the snake people. Apparently, the horse people say, you can live with us, but 17 of our villages have been destroyed. And what the snake people do is they come in, they take our women, they take our kids, and then they, they kill everybody below a certain age, and they kill all the elderly, and they sell them through a network to a tribe or to possibly Europeans over on the West Coast. And the Varendry expedition is now quite fearful because they found out that this total genocide is going on, and all tribes on the Great Plains fear the snake people. And eventually the horse people say, why don't you head down south? you'll find the Bow people. And I think you might take more of an interest in the Bow people because the Bow people are a little bit closer to what you're seeking along the Buenaventura River. And they said, what do you mean? And they say, basically you'll see. So they go down south and they find it is a agricultural society of Native Americans, which is different because mostly the other societies have been hunter-gatherer or kind of out on the plains. These people use horses for agriculture. They use them to plow the fields. They speak in broken Spanish. They have Mexican guns. They have their own governmental system set up. And they say, we're going on a war path to finally wipe out the snake people. So they take the Varendries and they continue westwards to the foot of the mountain range where they believe that the snake people are. And they say, the Varendries did, that the Bow people had about 2,000 warriors and their families. So several thousand people were heading towards the base of these mountains and they sent two scouts up ahead. The Varendry stayed quite a bit behind. And when they sent these scouts up ahead, they found out that a snake village that they had seen earlier was now evacuated. And so this sets off red alarms everywhere. They're terrified. They are truly mortified because that means the snakes know that they're there. And even with their force of thousands of warriors, they say this is too much of a risk or liability to take. So clearly the snakes were some of the most fearsome people and it would be fascinating to know who they were, but they'd never been contacted by Europeans before. And it would be a hundred plus years before they were really documented again. So if the tribe still existed, it would, it probably collapsed and turned into several different tribes, but it was probably the snake Shoshonean people, because I've heard that they were very fierce throughout their history. But that's all conjecture, because these warriors continued southwards and the Varendries joined them before splitting back off and heading back towards the east, although now they were a couple of hundred miles south. They were likely in central or south Wyoming at this point when they continued back towards the Dakotas, heading along a horizontal line before heading up north. 
By March of 1743, the Varendry expedition started to realize they were kind of out of luck. They realized that the Bow people would not be able to penetrate into Snake People territory because one village was enough to scare a party of several thousand back south. And as they were heading south, the Bow people realized this and they said, hey, if you want to make it back, you might want to contact the Little Cherry people. So the French sent out two scouts to go find the Little Cherry people. It was a 10-day journey south. And when they found them, the scouts came back up and said, you're welcome here anytime. They go, they spend some time with the Little Cherry people, and they find in southern Wyoming a Spanish man. Now, what the heck a Spanish man was doing out there is anybody's guess. He wasn't a Spanish-speaking Native American. He was just a Spaniard. And so they get to talking to him, and the Spaniard tells them, if you head south for 20 days, you'll find the Spanish Empire. Well, the French just want to get back home, so they say, well, how do we get back home? And he says, you might want to head over to your east and north along the river because that river goes all the way down. The French knew this. And they went over to a Mandan village there and it took them a, a quite a good time. They, they took another couple of weeks along the Great Plains. They reached this Mandan village near what is now Fort Pierre, South Dakota, and they bury lead plates. And these lead plates basically state the purpose of the expedition. They say, we came here to found New France. We, we raised the flag, which was three Florida Lees on a blue field. And their territory that was claimed was all the way from Eastern Canada down to the Great Plains, bordering the borders of the Spanish Empire. It was an ambitious claim and it fell apart years later because this was the only expedition for decades out in this part of the world. On a hill overlooking the South Dakota capital of Pierre, in 1913 a few children were kind of playing in the dirt on the side of the hill and they found a few lead plates. Now instead of founding their own religion, they discovered that these plates were to New France and they told the story of a family of fur trader explorers that were looking to colonize the New World for France. And from the late 1730s to the early 1740s, Louis de la Vendrie and his father and three brothers explored pushing west from the Fort uh, La Pierre, I believe, along the Great Lakes west. And they are believed to be the first men who saw the Rocky Mountains from Wyoming. And they also explored as far north as the Pass of Saskatchewan, Lake Winnipeg, and several other lakes in the region. But they explored the entire central part of America. And from this, they claimed five colonies uh, for New France. And it wasn't all from just this expedition, but from 1712 at its height to their dissolution at the Treaty of Paris in, I believe, 1763, New France had five colonies, which stretched all the way from Hudson's Bay down to the Gulf of Mexico. It was Quebec, Canada, uh, the Great Plains, I believe Pleasant, uh, Acadia, and these were encompassing all of North America. And it's fascinating to think that these men came to this remote hill uh, as they were moving their way up this river here on the way up to a Mandan village in North Dakota from which they pushed further west. Probably the first westward exploration done by Europeans in the New World. And they were told that in this local area there was a Frenchman three days away. Now they never met him, but decades later the Corps of Discovery under Lewis and Clark, uh, Clark they recruited a Charbonneau from this area. And Charbonneau was a Frenchman living out in the middle of nowhere in, you know, Mandan, Lakota territory. Well, these plates were not discovered until 1913, so a lot of people believed this expedition was kind of just mythical because the proportions of it were so astounding to Western historians. They discovered the plates, they discovered the flag, and it was a fascinating moment. There's a monument there today. I visited it. It's, it's a really cool place to go. And then they continued up north and they found an Assiniboine village. And the Assiniboine were a party of a hundred people. They were they were roaming the plains to make it back up to Fort Lorraine, and the French said, that's perfect, we're heading to Fort Lorraine. And so they armed them with French guns, and they, they conversed a little bit, and at some point during this journey back to Fort Lorraine, they were ambushed by Lakota, who were in a minor conflict with the Assiniboine. And the Assiniboine and the French, they had guns. So the Lakota, who even though they outnumbered the French and the Assiniboine, they retreated. 
and the French quickly made their way back to Fort Lorraine, and the expedition was quickly forgotten, at least up until their paperwork was found in 1851. But we still don't know a lot about their earlier expeditions. For example, 1738, they tried to find the River Buenaventura. We have no record of that. There could have been journals elsewhere that haven't been discovered, and maybe one day they will be. Maybe one day we'll find a journal from an expedition that went out before them, because again, the French were in Quebec from 1609. So there could have been people out here on the Great Plains a century before the Verendries, and it's fascinating to think about it in that context.